Hi you guys, uh, Randy Richard here in the shop. So uh, I've been really busy, so I haven't got too many videos going there uh, lately. Uh, so I was, uh, for my last video, I was getting ready to put an engine in a Cessna 172K model, that's a 1969 uh, version of a Cessna 172. Uh, and uh, we got the, uh, the engine came, arrived last Friday, and uh, we, got, we worked on a uh, full day on Saturday. Uh, we did about a half day of sheet metal work. Uh, we had to repair the baffling, so that took us about half a day. The owner uh, assisted me in all this, so we were able to get the job done uh, a little bit quicker. Uh, so uh, we, uh, like I said, we did a half day, a half day on Saturday of sheet metal work. Uh, installed some uh, some of the parts on the engine, uh, the baffling and uh, uh, the vacuum pump, and uh, we left the carburetor off at the time. We, we waited to put the carburetor on the engine after we had it installed. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, we took the fuel pump off that came with it because this plane doesn't need a fuel pump on the engine. It's gravity fed from the wings, and. Uh, Let's see. That's about it. And then we well went out. Then we both went out to the airport, took the engine and engine mount. And Saturday we got the engine mount mounted on the plane. Got the engine mounted on the engine mount. We had a few other things done. And then uh, Sunday we only worked at about a half a day on Sunday afternoon, and uh, all day on Monday. And then uh, most of the day, uh, not quite all day, on uh, Tuesday. And we ended the day uh, flying the airplane on Tuesday for oh, 30 minutes or so as a test flight uh, right in the local area around our airport. Thing uh, ran uh, just, just great, uh, smooth, and since then he's flown it I think once or twice. He's probably flying it today, matter of fact. So uh, he's got to go through a break-in period here. Uh, we run a mineral oil in the engine. Uh, to get the rings seated, that adds a little bit extra friction uh, for the cylinders. Uh, that that engine had uh, chrome plated cylinders in it, and chrome plated ones, I, in my opinion, are the hardest ones to get the rings to seat. They work well, but they are about the hardest. So you run them run them full power, and uh, yeah, get those rings seated. So I was going to have to run that mineral oil for probably do it for 50 hours. And then uh, at the end of that, he'll change oil and go to um, a multi-viscosity oil. Uh, I don't know which one he's going to choose to run in there, but uh, he'll probably run a... Uh, no, he, he might just run a fixed uh, viscosity. Hmm. Well, it's up to him. He can run multi-viscosity or a fixed viscosity oil. Uh, anyway, um, so that all came out really well. Uh, so we the spring is coming fast here uh, around our house here. So we have uh, 20 fruit trees uh, that we, you know, get food from. And we tore out three this winter, planted new three new ones uh, uh, about a month and a half ago. So the weeds are really starting to grow. Uh, it's really warming up quick. So we I had to do some disking yesterday. We'll do some spraying today and things like that. We get the sprinklers. We're probably going to get our sprinklers partially running today. Things like that. So, uh, I've just been really busy. Anyway, I'm going to start on a, a new product. Well, here. Uh, I got my shirt on. My Randy Richard and Shop shirt. These are a little darker than anticipated. Uh, I was hoping for a little lighter color, but when you're choosing stuff online, it's hard to tell what's going on. And uh, so, I, I, I didn't think they'd be this dark. But, Hey, it works because uh, you can't see the black, but they work. They're actually uh, not too bad. I, for me, I was uh, pleasantly surprised how well. And with the back there, came out good. So uh, uh, I hope uh, everybody is uh, happy with that. Uh, it was a, kind of a little bit of a shot in the dark. Uh, see how things were going to come out. Uh, I know Tom has had some issues, but uh, I don't. I haven't received any complaints or anything, so I'm just hopefully uh, everybody's happy. Uh, they maybe could be a little bit bigger, but it does kind of stretch out, so uh, they may be a little tighter than I thought they would be. But so other than that, 
A, it's a shirt, but they're a good color for in the shop. They don't get so dirty. But thank you for everybody for their support uh, with the t-shirts. Uh, you, you can still order them, and, but once they get to a certain number, then they'll make them. So, you know, if you want to order one, go for it and, uh, and stuff. And so uh, I saw somebody ordered a hoodie. Now the hoodies, and the only ones that I make anything on are the t-shirts. I did not, I, you know, I said, okay, go ahead. Uh, you can order a hoodie or a woman's shirt. Uh, but the, only the men's shirt is the one thing I make a dime on. So uh, the other stuff, order it. I mean, the one of the guys in Canada, I think it was, oh, uh, Kelly, he, Breckenridge, I think it was, yeah, he, he ordered a hoodie and sent me a picture uh, he had on Facebook. And uh, those came out really nice. I really like those. So anyway, uh, so project stuff. I mentioned before I was going to uh, rate, oh, back up a second. So I did a tool trade with Jim Lickety on, or Lickety, I'm sorry. Sorry, Jim. Uh, on a, a dividing head center, uh, you know, tail center. So I did that trade, and the, and the center here is higher than, um, than my center on my dividing head. So what I'm going to do, which was better than lower, so that's why I did the trade. So I'm going to uh, add a, a plate of a half inch plate of aluminum to the bottom of the dividing head, and that will raise it up to within maybe a, just a few thousandths. It's, it should be very very close on all the measurements I did. And so I'm going to swing you around and show you that uh, what I'm going to do the plan and. That that is going to lead into another project. I, I need to want to get that work all set up uh, the tails the center and The dividing head so that works because that's going to lead so I can do another project The other project is fixing that broken one broken gear. I had on the Lance lathe one of the change gears I yeah, I, I, I bought a gear and you know I used to probably saw that in the other videos and I that's what is running on there now but I want to fix the other one. It only is missing two teeth. So, um, but I want to mount it on a mandrel and use the dividing head to, to cut the gears. Uh, uh, so I'm going to make a mandrel for it. Uh, it's a 20 millimeter bore. Uh, it's really 20.109 millimeters. Uh, but so I'm just going to make a mandrel for it and be able to mount it on there. So, this project is going to be a multi, multi uh, chapter type thing, you know, multi part uh, videos process. Uh, so, but uh, me checking out how I'm going to cut my taper on the mandrel, I can just, I could uh, offset the uh, tailstock, but I'd really like to try out the taper attachment on the Lance Lathe. I have not used it yet. So I checked that out, and I have a clamping issue with one of the clamps of how it mounts on the lathe. So I'm going to end up taking that apart, fixing that. <laughs> you know how this is how one thing leads into another, right? So we'll uh, we'll go through all of this stuff uh, in the next. Uh, I don't know how many videos going to take. You know, five, six videos at least, probably. But to, to, to make any parts we need to make and repairs we need to do. Uh, so I'm going to swing you around on to show you all that stuff. Uh, one other thing, this is for Brad Jacob. Now Brad Jacob's basement shop guy. Uh, if you don't see, watch his channel, go over and check him out. Uh, Brad's a good guy. He does some great restoration work on his equipment he did on South Bend equipment he's done, uh, and he's doing other projects too. So, but he's heading up another project uh, with the YouTube uh, community of machining guys, and. Uh, Hold on. Hold on. Visitors. Okay, I got disturbed. Uh, some people drove in looking for a horse trailer. So, anyway. Also, uh, I was talking to uh, Brad, uh, Jacob, the basement shop guy. So, he started a project in the machining YouTube community. So, Brad, uh, I'm going to show you the material I have uh, for the 
punches. Uh, it's all W1 drill rod. I have plenty to make a, you know, a set from uh, 1 16th to 5 8 a uh, size punch. So uh, it's, uh, I think, uh, 10 punches, you know, every 16th. So I'll show you that too. Okay, let me swing you around. Okay, so uh, now here's the tail center. Here's my uh, dividing head. This is the bottom of the dividing head. So here's a drawing. Uh, what I'm going to do is just going to be a rectangular plate. And it's 4.4 inches wide, 8 and an eighth inches long. We're going to do uh, six screws, uh, quarter 20s. Uh, uh, flathead Allen, flathead Allen screws. They're half an inch long. Well, three quarters of an inch, I guess. So that's what we're going to. Uh, pretty simple pattern. Half inch from the edge. We'll. Uh, there's a rough idea what we're going to do. I'm just going to cut that off with a bandsaw. Then I'm. Gonna, this is not quite square. I'll square it up. It's actually a little bit. <coughs> on the short side by about an eighth of an inch because it's an eight inch piece of plate I bought. Um, so that'll have to do and we'll uh, we'll just square it up uh, so it fits on there and uh, drill the holes then we'll, I'm going to disassemble this. I'm going to take uh, I'll take the uh, head part, rotating head part off, the, just the whole thing. should be able to just uh, hopefully roll it right out of there and uh, that way we'll just be able to uh, put the base uh, in the mill and uh, drill the holes and tap them and then it's going to come out uh, hopefully uh, really close now if this is I mean I've done a bunch of measurements of course and set all this up on the surface plate and all that and measured this it's really really close I'm not I'm you know like a thousand within a thousandth or so i come up with so after we do this we'll see how it is if it's no if i'm not happy with it if it's not within a thousandth or two um we'll see how i feel and uh i might add an additional what i would do is i'll i'd add an additional shim here uh piece of aluminum, maybe a piece of 20 thousandths or 32 thousandths, something like that in there. And then I'll, I'll uh, machine this off so it is the right height. Uh, that's, that's my plan there. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything elaborate here with a ground plate. or It's not that big a deal uh, to me if it's a thousandths or so usually. Um, that's a it's that's pretty minor really. So that's what we're gonna do uh, to get her uh, get her done. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that. Now, you know, it's out of the way. And then something interesting about these screws. These are uh, 82 degree uh, counter skunk screws. So I. Do have a set of 82 degree countersinks, and just uh, something to remember that all screws aren't the same on their countersinks. Uh, like aircraft screws and rivets, they're 100 degree countersinks. These ones are 82. Some are 90. It all matters uh, what you buy. Uh, so that's something to remember about uh, countersinks. They're not all the same. Uh, it's something to remember. Anyway, so Brad, this is a half inch uh, W1 drill rod. I have, uh, oh, I probably have three times this much. Uh, these cut, these are drops uh, from my machinist friend. Uh, so I do have more of these. This is half inch. Uh, I've got a nice length here of, uh, oh, 30 something inches, but we'd only need a couple of these pieces off of this. This is 5 eighths. 
and then this is a chunk of three quarter and we could use one chunk off of there so we could go from a 5 8 uh, or 1 16th we can make a 1 16th punch up up to uh, 5 8 I think I figured and these are just so you know these are five and a, five and an five point one four oh so five point in five and five and an eighth inches long roughly. they're they're all pretty close to the same anyway so a figure about five inch five inch length punch which is just fine which would be a nice punch and I have the best stock for us the rest so keep that in mind Brad okay we're gonna go over to the service plate and I'll show you the the gear deal. Got the mount on. We got the engine partially hung. And then we're going to torque, torque down the engine mounts. And then uh, we still got the carburetor put on and we get the sheet metal baffling put on, alternator on, still needs to go, prop on. A lot of things uh, still to hook up, so. Engine installed, we flew it for a half an hour. Put the cow back on, we're good to go. Okay, well, we're service plate. So one of those things uh, for my birthday, I forgot to show you guys, was they made me uh, my wife and my daughter there, they also had a coffee cup made. And actually the coffee cup came out really nice. But a white shirt in the shop just, I don't think, cuts it. But on the coffee cup, I really like that. It came out really good with the copper gear and everything. So and, uh, it came out nice. So thanks, you guys, again. I only, only got one, though. I might have to get a few more of those. Those are really nice. <laughs> anyway. So uh, here's the gear. You can see these two teeth, how they're broken out. What I'm going to do is I'll grind those. I'm going to grind them out. And I'm going to braise this whole area up so we can cut those uh, teeth again. So this is a this is this bore is 
uh, 20.109 uh, millimeters. Uh, so that converts to 0 0.7904 thousandths. So this is a this is a mandrel that uh, Peter Owen sent me. This is a 15 16 uh, I think. 15, somewhere on the end here. 15 16 mandrel. So I was using that to measure and compare things uh, with and, and stuff, uh, the sizes, the length, and things like that. So in, uh, this is a, this is a 17th edition Machinery's Handbook on page 1429. Uh, there's just a couple, uh, just a paragraph about lathe arbors in here, and they 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 give you a, uh, an idea of how they're how they're um, measured out and the taper on one. I was concerned about the taper of uh, what what kind of taper is, is usually used, you know, because that needs to slide on there and then get tight. So they have some measurements in here, you know, right here, this little table about proportions of solid lathe arbors. So if you need to make one, you can get an idea, especially because here they only have certain ones listed, a quarter, half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. So you can get the uh, proportions and ideas of how, of how they're made. But in the text, it says our arbors are usually tapered at about six thousandths of an inch per foot. So this one here is was uh, 15 sixteenths, and the tapered part is five inches long. So I went with the same dimension as far as the length go. It's overall a seven. Uh, we'll go with five inches on the on the tapered part. I made a drawing, and th uh, this one was tapered about four thousandths overall, and. Uh, so I made this one tapered four thousandths overall. Also, so we're going to start down here at 0 0.788, and we want to end up up here about 7.92. So 0 0.7904 is the um, bore of the gear, and at this line, at 1.9 inches in, is where that dimension is, or you know, roughly. Um, so they give you, and so it's kind of interesting because they give you an idea of where your nominal dimension is, of how far in on the arbor. Uh, so, you know, distance F and diameter D, uh, how far that is, you know, as far as a relationship for taper and where it needs to get tight. So mine, mine ended up being here at, I don't know, 1.9 inches, so not 1.942 actually. Now, if I want that to be a little bit closer to this end, which I probably don't, I just want for the clearance, I can make this end a tiny bit smaller, like I could drop a half a thousandth off of that or something, you know, and it would then creep over here a little more. So, this was a uh, uh, interesting to do that. I've never made one before. I've uh, this way I've uh, made mandrels but never a tapered one like this uh, so uh, finding those uh, the information in the machinery handbook to help you make one and come up with your own dimensions for something that's uh, not in the table is uh, kind of fun to do so we'll uh, follow that drawing and make that it'll be a like I said so this is going to lead into the lathe repair of the clamping part of the taper attachment and uh, I'm just going to take the camera over there and, and uh, I haven't taken it apart yet but I'm just gonna you can get a little overview quick overview of what the taper attachment looks like on the lance lathe it's a little different and I've never seen one like this or I should say I've never seen how one attaches to the lathe this way uh, before so uh, a lot of them travel with your carriage you know, a lot of taper attachments, and then some are fixed on the ways. So 
We'll take the camera over there and I'll show you what that all looks like. Okay, so here's the uh, this lance lay. This is the taper attachment right here. You can see here, this is a dovetail um, shape, right? So this runs the whole length of the lathe bed. And these arms are dovetailed onto that. Uh, are not, this is not, this is an arm. This base piece is really all one piece with two, with two uh, parts that come in and attach right here, right, and slide. I mean, well, oh, I just slid it down here, but it's heavy. It's, it slides actually quite well, uh, but it's heavy. So this is your, you know, taper attachment part here. This part attaches to the, to the uh, back end of the uh, cross slide right here. Uh, uh, slide. This is, this part is what slides on the taper part. Slides very, I mean, all this is very nice. This attaches to the back here of the cross slide. Uh, you know, and you're tightening that up and that will move the cross slide in and out and you have to disengage the cross slide. But these clamp, this one clamps pretty much okay. But that, that other end doesn't. And uh, so I, I need to take this all apart and and see why these don't clamp on very good. I th I'm thinking these parts down underneath here that pinch like a gib almost pinch onto the dovetail um, is screwed up or worn out or something. So I'm not sure. So once I get it apart, we'll take a look at it and, and see. Somebody's used some big uh, pliers on this here on these handles. Uh, they're kind of chewed up a bit to make them tight. So, yeah, they've kind of been horsed around. So these are probably worn out, and and uh, I need to uh, we need to fix whatever the, whatever is on the end of this. I haven't even taken one of these out yet. Oh, uh, so that's hollow. Yeah, see. And there's a piece here that clamps. Oh, see that that goes up there and clamps on that. This is aluminum, so that, that's supposed to be pushed up, actually like that by that angle, and it's supposed to clamp on there. These are probably worn out, so it, so it could push farther. I'll have to check that other end. So. Anyway, that'd be a fun little project. Make new ones of those. Uh, I'll probably make them out of bronze or something though, brass or something like that. Something a little better, a little little harder than the aluminum. Uh, that'd be a good little project. Okay. Well, uh, we'll get set up and we'll do some machining. <laughs>